But here's another person, the person who just isn't sleeping well, who wakes up in the middle of the night with racing thoughts, and then somehow they're barely getting a few hours of sleep because they took the five milligrams of melatonin, <laughs> and it's just to just to give their, their soul and their body a rest. But then they wake up every single day with a pit of anxiety and fear in their stomach. You're sitting with them, but when when does the next move happen? How do we, how do we, how does that person get up and then move eventually? I, like, I, what it goes back like? to that identity question we were having. I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, um, do you want to not feel like this? And I don't mean that in a, in a mocking way or a pejorative way. I, I, I mean that in to get up, you might fall down again. And to get up, you might get embarrassed again. And to get up, you might get fired again. To get up, you might whatever. But it, you won't be feeling like this. And so the, you know, it's the old statement, like until the pain of change is, you know, less than the pain that you're feeling right now, you're not gonna do anything. Right. And so, um, uh, I think you have to ask somebody, are you, are you in? And then we're going to go through, and I, I, again, I try to distill these things to out of theories. I try to take all the neuroscience and all the theoretical, all, everything into how can I make this as, as simple as possible for a guy like me? Um, and it was, I'm going to ask you, who's running your life? Who is telling you when you have to be where, what you should be doing, what you have to be doing? Who, um, who do you owe? Who's telling you um, when it comes to boundaries? What part of reality are you ignoring? What's the state of your health? Um, what is the state of your relationships? What's the state of, you know, and we're going to go through those we're going to go through those those stages, man. We're going to go through those choices and add, begin to pull those things apart. And sometimes um, we're, we're, we're recording a, um, a TV show, I guess, is, is probably the easiest way. It's not really a TV show, but it's, it's, it's similar. And as uh, this book came is coming out, um, we put out a call, and I've been walking alongside a guy and his wife for 90 days. And different different um, homework assignments and different challenges, and um, he's had a couple of rough patches, you know, fights with family, fights with this, and it's been almost like a karate kid. Like he's doing wax on, wax off, didn't realize it, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a fight, and those skills are like, oh, that's I, I'm I, I've got these skills I didn't even know I had. Um, but that took him coming to the table saying. I know what's coming is going to be hard, and I know change is a great unknown, but I can't keep doing it like this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I have these skills I didn't know I have. We'll go back to the uh, the analogy about the body. I, I have this muscle I didn't even know was there. But if I tell somebody who's struggling with anxiety, you just need to sleep more. That's not helpful, right? Yeah, so what's what's before so that? So when I then? tell somebody, so all right, helpful. cool, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. For 30 days... You have to promise you'll take a walk every day for 30 days, one hour. You're going to set your alarm for 10 p.m. And at 9 p.m., every electronic in your house goes off. The first two or three weeks, it's going to be torture to me hard because you have to do you have to now you have to be a husband for two more hours. Like I don't or another hour. Like I don't know how to do that um, for 30 days. The moment you open your eyes and your partner opens their eyes, I want you to hold their hand. And then right before you leave for work and right when you get home and then right before bed. Or if you don't have a partner, your pet. I want you just to spend some obnoxious time in a hug with a dog or your cat or your wife or whatever. And we're going to do several things like that. And without even realizing it, you are slowly giving your body a chance. And it will go, it will land the plane if you give it a shot. And that's what I mean. We've created these lives our bodies can't live in. We've created this chaos. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, well, you got, you got anxiety. Well, of course you do, man. Uh, and so I think it's a matter of not saying you should be doing this instead of I want you to try these four things, five things. And let's just do it for 30 days. Don't just do it for three days and go, this doesn't work. Don't just do it until you have your first fight with your mom. Let's just do it for 30 days. And then let's, we're going to add this in 60 days. And then what's going to happen in 90 days, you're going to have a blow up with your spouse. Or you're going to get a really gnarly work day or you and your dad are going to get after it. And you're going to realize, oh, I took a lot of deep breaths during that fight. And I chose to not say that thing I was about to say. And I'm going to go for a walk right now before I respond. And suddenly you realize, oh, I got it. I got it. 
There's nothing more insulting to, the, to a guy or a man or woman who's struggling with anxiety to be told, just chill out. That's the worst, man. Same as if you got depression. Someone just tells you to cheer up. You just want to set their car on fire and hopefully. Presence over platitudes, right? This oh, is like yeah. how we walk other people through grief. And this is why I say so often um, that transformation, because this is what we're after, right? Transformation is not a life without scars and a life without getting beat up. It's it's growing so that we can face life with courage and resilience. Transformation doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily. And the, what I hear you saying is like this daily commitment to just show up to make the small steps. I mean, I know you quoted James Clear in your book, and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's the whole thought of 1% better every day. And I so subscribe to that because we'll change when the pain of regret, and I think this is a hinge moment for us. Like we'll change when the pain of regret is greater than the pain of making the change in and of itself, there right? Go. Yeah. I, I, there's never a day I can brush my teeth so good that I don't have to do it for another two weeks. I got to do it that night. I love that. I got to do it tomorrow. And so there's never a place I can reach where, dude, my body's not feeling anxious. I'm actually sleeping pretty good. That's not the yeah. day to quit doing the things that got you there. It's a thing you got to do for the rest of your life. And I think there's some freedom. Ah. There. Um, mm -hmm. most of us are trying so desperately to get to some magical, imaginary, mythical fin finish line so that we'll finally like ourselves, so that we'll finally have to stop exercising so much, so that we can finally have the greatest crazy sex in our, with our spouse. Whatever. Those places don't exist. They don't exist. They're not real. And so if I want to have a car that lasts me a long time, I got to fill up with gas and I got to take care of it and I got to change oil. And if I want to have breath, it's not terrible and teeth that don't fall out. I got to brush my teeth twice a day. And if I want to, um, if, if I want to have a good, um, aesthetic, a good physical body, there's not an exercise, a workout I can do on Monday that I'm done for the month. I got to go again the next day. I got to go again the next day. And so when it comes to living an non-anxious life to living a life of not of, peace always because life's coming at you but to create a world where i can exist when the storms come and not only exist but i could thrive um that's just that's a practice it's a thing you do every day and it just becomes incorporated into your life and yes that might mean that you're not going to do every um travel sports league and that your nine-year-old soccer coach isn't going to tell you what you're doing for every weekend for the rest of your life it might mean that you got to sit down with your spouse and say hey we are not the marriage we had ends today we got to build something new because it's not working like you might have to quit your job that you love but it's not it's time to go it might mean a lot of sacrifice um but it's a thing you do every day